Welcome back to the Gentleman Ultras YouTube channel. I am your host as always, Richard Hall. Having a look through the headlines, and uh, I think we can say that the executive board is talking about Inter, and I think that the fact that it's all about Super Mister, great picture of Conte there, says so. They acknowledge that they're calling him the Super Coach here, saying that he's turned Inter around in Serie A, um, and he's collected 107 points over top six live rivals. Then they go on to talk about the boom of Bastoni, Barello and Lotaro and Lukaku being worth over 100 million. We've talked about it a lot on here, but it's, it is really something that feels like a changing of the guard at the moment. The investment with Suning, whilst it's not sorted out, uh, it it's, looks like it's getting there with Stephen Jan coming back in April uh, to, to sort that out. Hopefully with the Scudetto, in his um, opinion. Uh, well, sorry, he said he would like to start having that sorted out by the end of April. They've taken on the extra loan to see them through to the end of the season. And of course, it'd be a lot more attractive proposition if they can negotiate uh, the sale of some of, the, some of Inter um, for, uh, you know, with a Scudetto winning squad. Um, all positives at the moment, though, he's talking about the fact that Inter are going to spend some money. That There was um, yesterday talk that there will not be uh, any, any sales, any flash sales, as people have predicted. The likes of Hakimi going to Arsenal for a cheap price. Very unlikely. Uh, very unlikely the fact that we're going to see the likes of uh, uh, Lukaku disappear. And the interesting thing about this as well is that none of the players are really asking for an out. We may see some uh, some people go, the likes of Vidal and Kolarov, uh, people like that. But then we've got exciting players like Sebastiano Esposito coming back from Venezia. So with Inter, it's quite an interesting scenario at the moment. Um, but it does feel like there's a real... Um, change at the moment with their with with what they're doing and, and people are actually really saying that Conte he's, he's done almost not the impossible but he's done something that many have failed at doing with Inter uh, always been a big powerful force but never uh, since well since 2010 um, managed to get back in amongst the big boys in that sense and you know even with then uh, this has got the the feel that it could be the beginning of something whereas the 2010 team even though Moretti thought it was the start of something was actually the end of something um, Inter at the top, it says, similar similar lines, no point going through that in Tuto Sport because he's very similar looking at the way uh, Conte is. Just interestingly in, uh, in Tuto Sport, Compensate Signore. Uh, well, the High Court have uh, decided that basically after 10 years of legal battles, he's been found innocent uh, from, from what was supposed to be match fixing. Uh, the FAGC now is looking for compensation. compensation. Football is his world. Um, a great player, great player for Lazio, great player for Bologna. Still as uh, up in Bologna there with his football academy and his restaurant. Uh, but let's hopefully he can get back to something now of uh, enjoying his normal life. Be recognised for what he was a very very good centre forward. Nearly said something else there. So we're also looking here. Um, Gazetta talking about Napoli, Lazio, and Roma. The South Central Italy risks losing the Champions League places. So it's basically looking now and saying that everyone's following the northern clubs. Well, and especially, uh, obviously, Milan and Inter, Juve to an extent. And it's going to be quite interesting to see what happens in um, the next couple of weeks here. Because Lazio, for instance, have they got the resources to push completely for that amount of time? Probably not. Roma are hit and miss. We've talked about Napoli being hit and miss as well. So it's going to be a really interesting finish to this season because... There's so many clubs now that can possibly finish in that, in that um, Champions League spot. Juventus, Milan, we talked about Atalanta, we've not even mentioned really them. They've got a very valid chance. Um, so we will see. I think when you look at it again, you know, again, it feels like you're repeating yourself sometimes, but these uh, big these clubs here, you know, there's a change in, uh, there's been change in ownerships, of course, in, say, Roma, for instance, but it does feel like, even with Juventus, they're in a transition period, but they're still looking to be and are uh, an elite level club, an elite level um, ownership and um, you know they can look okay, they've not won in the first time in God knows how long, but they can regenerate and come back into look now that their, their project really going strong and Milan as well coming through. So with those three at the top it doesn't leave much room for anyone else, especially when you have teams like Atalanta who are really pushing and punching above their weight, Lazio too to some extent, it puts the pressure on the likes of Roma and Napoli who have got good squads to really come on, but it's all exciting for Serie A, especially with next season, new TV rights, hopefully um, you know, a different way of watching football, can Italy modernise as a whole uh, plethora of arguments to say that it can, also a lot to say that it can't. Um, what else have we got here? So, um, again, there's talk of Ronaldo, again, about them throwing the shirt, criticism from the fans. You can understand it in some respects. 
it does seem like uh, you, you might get frustrated, you might do a million things, but to throw the shirt, especially in Italy, I think that means uh, a, a not, it's not the greatest thing to do. Um, where else are we? We talked about Dybala and uh, Belotti a lot over the last week or so, obviously linking Dybala with the move out of Juventus, uh, particularly because he's been, well, at odds, should we say, and uh, disciplinary as well, not been great recently. And we've ever since start Cristiano Ronaldo entering, there's always been this debate with Juventus fans now, you know, is it Dybala, is it Cristiano Ronaldo? Um, who knows? But it looks as though now PSG may be interested in Dybala, um, who's also attracting the attention of Chelsea and Manchester United. So that's quite quite a big link. Would it could it happen? I presume so. It certainly could. But Belotti uh, is also now on the radar of Olympic Lyonnais. So that could be um, a new option for him. When we've been talking mostly about Milan and Roma in the papers, focusing on him. Finally, um, we're also looking here. We talk of Milan, who have apparently attempted by Fiorentina's Vlaovic. The uh, the youngster's been very impressive this season. And it could be a very, very slick and um, clever move by Milan, and a for potentially affordable one for them. So that would be interesting to see how that goes. And I think we're going to get more and more of this as the season draws to close. We're going to see a lot of talk in the transfer market, but it's going to be really interesting, as I've mentioned before, because with the pandemic, with what's been going on, what money do the clubs have? So let's wait and see. And uh, for me, it's Jeff for now.